This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on this week's episode, he's taking a look at the Cops and Robbers shooter sequel, Payday 3. Ugh. What do we have here? Uh, yeah, I'm not, I don't know if I don't think I approve of this. If you want to see more of Jonathan reacting to Payday Guns, make sure to subscribe as we've got two episodes looking at the weapons of Payday 2. And if you're interested in buying Payday 3 for yourself, GameSpot sister site Fanatical is selling the silver edition of the game. You can save 17% when you use the code FANATICAL17, details are in the description of this video, and just as an FYI, GameSpot and Fanatical are both fandom companies. Right, over to Jonathan and the guns of Payday 3. We've looked at a lot of AR-15, especially M4 adjacent weapons on this series. It, it's kind of a good test of have they done a good job on the guns in a game if you can get an M4 or an M16 or something right. That's if you are copying a military variant, the actual M4 or M4A1. Now this I think is, is supposed to be a military M4 or M4A1. The barrel's too long for that though. So this would have to be a Colt uh, 6920, I think is the model designation, which is the law enforcement version of the M4. So this is the 14 and a half inch barrel. It's got the right proportions, therefore. It has the grenade launcher cutout there. This rifle has the cutout, but the barrel is elongated. It looks, looks stretched, but it's not a proportionate stretch. They have modeled a 16 inch barrel on this M4, which makes it uh, a Colt, uh, either the Colt Law Enforcement Carbine or something similar to that. Uh, however, we can tell from the fact that this thing is firing on automatic that it is in fact selective fire. And it has on the model, which is really well done, I have to say, the infamous, in, in some circle, mine, um, third pin hole. That holds a critical bit of componentry that, without going into it, allows you to, to fire or to install a trigger mechanism for automatic fire. So this, uh, let, let's let's put those things together and say this would be a civilian semi-auto 16 inch AR-15 that someone has illegally converted to fire automatic. Given the context of the game, that would be my um, rationalization for why those two features appear on this gun. Surrender while you can. I have to carry the shield. This is really weird. So just as I was thinking, are the different reload animations tied into tactical reloads versus emergency reloads or whatever, I've, I've, re I've seen here the ammo count on the gun going up as you walk over enemy, downed enemies with ammo. So normally that, that ammo pickup that would happen automatically typically, normally that would add to your pool of ammunition, which is obviously a bit unrealistic already, but this is a game. What's happening here is the, the ammunition from the body at your feet is going into your, magically into magazine on your rifle, which is confusing me and in theory means that you could just keep firing forever if you keep running over bodies and you would never have to do one of the very nicely animated reloads. There's a Glock, of course there's a Glock. Fair bit of, fair bit of detail on this thing. I've, I've pulled out a, a Glock 17 from our collection. I think what this is, well, it says on the slide, it's got some fake markings, because again, the lawyers are, are a thing. It does have, they are quite faithfully done though. So it's it's got the Strike logo instead of the Glock logo. So they've changed that, but then the other markings are in the correct format. They're saying it's a Gen 5 Glock. Uh, first, I raise an eyebrow. Our oh, Gen 5 has front slide serrations and this beveling on the front of the slide. That's supposed to allow for easier reholstering and then the, the front slide serrations are for things like a, a safe press check or for cocking it from the front if that's what you want to do. And this doesn't have those serrations. Now, as my brain has just informed me or reminded me, I should say, when the Gen 5 Glock first came out, it did not have front slide serrations. These features were from a different model, but as production went on, they realized that those were features people wanted and they added them on. So this is actually, I believe, a correct Glock Gen 5. AK, this wouldn't be a payday game without an AK, I don't think. 
First impressions, not bad. The classic Romanian wooden pistol grip on the lower handguard there is a bit of a weird shape. The the Romanian one is, which is the, the main or the only uh, military service variant, I hope, <laughs> that had an integral wooden pistol grip on it at the front. Curves, it may curve forward or backward slightly, but it doesn't have that lip on the bottom. Otherwise, this is pretty much a standard looking AKM. We've got the laminated furniture looking pretty good there with the, the dark reddish colored lines, which are the glue that laminates the layers of, of plywood together to make the buttstock and the handguards. The gas block is maybe a bit to AK rather than AKM, but that's getting very nerdy and unfair. Yeah, I, I don't think I've got any, any red flags, <laughs> appropriately enough, over this one. Ugh. What do we have here? Some sort of dip or paint scheme with a, a horrific looking, very long adjustable precision rifle stock coupled with a low power magnified optical sight of some sort. And it looks like that's a ray. Yeah, that's a. Oh, I see. <laughs> Optical illusion. This ruthless paint scheme has gone over the rail and made it look like it's somehow an inbuilt sight rail. It's not. So these guys have stuck with these um, side mounted sight rail, giving you that outrigger over the top of the wobbly top cover, which isn't great for fitting optics to unless you redesign the gun, as some have. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I, don't know, I don't think I approve of this. So in case you're wondering where we have the, the reload on the M14 and we're getting this very a AR slapping the side to let to, to release the bolt forward, with the original design of the, of the M1 Garand, and you can obviously still do this with the, the M14, you have to pull back the charging handle and release it. Well, you don't have to, that's the point. So the M14, rather than having the, the clip release catch of the, um, because it doesn't have the on-block clip anymore of the Garand, they were able to install a bolt release catch. In Vietnam, when they trans transitioned from uh, M14s to AR-15s, they were already familiar with the idea of a bolt release catch, which is visible on this model. I am not confident about the slapping thing. I think you would want to more positively operate that with the thumb. Those of you who have time with M14s, uh, feel free to chime in on the realism of slapping it like that. I suspect it would be a bit, a little bit hit and miss, literally. So that suppressor is a little bit too effective, to say the least. This is still a 7.62 or 308 rifle. Sound suppressors are just not that effective. Um, so these guys that are completely unaware of this guy coming in with his M14, they wouldn't just hear something, they'd hear gunshots. They'd hear what would sound not dissimilar to gunshots. Uh, you, might, you might go, oh, what's that, very what's that relatively loud noise in the corridor? Better go and check, even if you didn't realize it was a firearm. Suppressors are have their place on a rifle like this, but not for stealthing through a corridor. This is very much movie territory that we're in here. They're coming in 30 seconds. Get ready. We got you now. This is the, the Milcor MGL in a relatively modern incarnation. It's quite a common military weapon. Would in theory have a law enforcement application for less lethal, but typically law enforcement organizations prefer something that cannot use the lethal rounds. Anyway, we're not talking about them. We're talking about the criminals here. So could they get hold of this? Well, frankly, if they can get hold of select fire AKs and things, then yeah. <laughs> Would you? It's a pretty indiscriminate weapon. It's one thing to, to shoot police that are coming at you with guns in this, in this imaginary scenario. Quite another to use high explosive fragmentation rounds that endanger basically everyone. Uh, might destroy your money, might cause all sorts of problems for you. But variety, of course, the, the player wants variety. The reload here, they are going for the single single load, manually remove and throw, throw away the empty case and insert fresh round, rotate, and then the next round, and then the next round. It's been a while since I looked at an MGL, but uh, I've, it should have an extraction system that, that kicks out all six, and then you load them singly. Uh, now, if you just want to reload the rounds you've fired, or you want to replace the rounds you've either fired or not, 
with rounds that have a, a different effect, then you would want to, to load singly. Here, I'm guessing it's been done in order to slow down the capability of this thing to deliver damage. Otherwise, it would be maybe too powerful. Okay, first reactions to whatever they're calling this. Um, I'm not even going to read that out because it's a SIG MPX. Little brother of the MCX. We're lucky to have an example here. Ours is the same configuration as this one. It's just got a standard A2 type flash suppressor, or A1 actually. You can obviously put whichever whatever muzzle device you want on it. And and we have here on, on this version. So this is basically the same except ours is semi-automatic only that's just the what was available to us when we went looking for one otherwise identical to the submachine gun version but technically this is a pistol caliber carbine or a short barreled rifle or whatever you want to call it it's not a submachine gun but the mpx was absolutely designed as a submachine gun and the gas system helps with that in theory in terms of being able to fire an awful lot of rounds without the thing having issues but it does make it a little bit heavier for what it is the stock identical to what you see in the game there it has a button on the top press to retract it all the way in so that's your ultimate small size package and there are actually there's another setting i don't think the game is going to tackle this so that's what game is set at and then press it again and pull it and that's your maximum length of pull which is still quite short actually we're, we're happy to have this because the the last gas of the submachine gun perhaps is represented by things like this alongside 556 five, very very short weapons like the scar sc so we, we like to keep up to some extent with modern trends with this collection That's a nice little feature actually on this. So this is uh, some sort of modified Remington 870 pump action shotgun, tube magazine, of course. Quite quite well done reload there. Something I've criticized on other things before. And the sound effect there is good. So you have that kind of hollow tubey sound. Sounds silly, but yeah, go with me on that. And then there's actually a tone or a pitch, not sure which, uh, difference on the final round. So it's almost like it's an audible indicator that you have fully reloaded the weapon. I haven't tried that and listened out for it. Maybe I will. No reason why it wouldn't be the case. Not sure about the pink and blue kind of theme going on here. Although I kind of do like the way that the so the, the pink paint has gone onto the, the action bars, the two, the two steel bars that run from the pump grip back into the action to actually push the bolt open. Those are painted pink, but because they're running in and out of the gun constantly and being worn, there are visible wear patterns on the action bars where the paint has worn off. And there's the wear, all like all the high points, which is where finish wears off in real life, that, that applies here. So on the, the very tips of, and corners of the Picatinny rail, the edges of the sight, the edges of the pump grip, we're seeing wear there. Although this is outlandish and brightly colored, it makes it feel more like a real object because of the way the attention that's been given, attention to detail that, that has been given to the gun. You need to stay close to the truck or I'll lose connection and the truck will stop. Right, we've got a Remington 700 or Remington 700 based sniper rifle. Oh, I say sniper rifle. The barrel on this thing as I'm looking at it now is very short. I don't know, 14 inch or less? Not really ideal for a, a cartridge of this nature. If you were you were wanting a suppressed sniper rifle, then you might take the barrel that short, especially if it was for closer range use, out to 100 meters or something. So maybe a police marksman rifle. Short barrels are not inherently inaccurate or a problem. Problem. It's just that the 762 308 cartridge was designed for something longer than this. So you're not getting the full capability of the round. And if you're not getting the full capability of the round, you might be wanting to look at something like 300 blackout instead or something in between. Another legally different gun, Swartzer Bison, is the Kiapa 
Rhino. So they're, they're using some Italian there to I think to try to make the connection a bit more overt in case you didn't recognize the Rhino. I'm not aware of any official police or military use of the, of the, the Rhino. I don't think that's any slight on the design. I think it's purely that revolvers with their limited capacity in particular are not very common anymore for that kind of fighting. So I can't do the super nerdy nitpick on how accurate these this version is it looks good to me though we've even got the different types of material represented there so the the sort of recoil shield insert is a is a different color and texture to the rest of the frame for example same for the yoke on the of the crane of the cylinder a lot of detail which is actually hard to do because this is a very smooth slick sided cnc machine design there isn't a lot of detail inherent in the design so for it to look as real as it does purely based on texture and lighting i think think is is impressive uh, in case anyone's wondering doesn't know the rhino as a design that barrel being so low down being aligned with the bottom chamber of the cylinder for each shot is absolutely the design purpose of this weapon it's supposed to put the barrel in line with your arm as much as possible to limit torque uh, and muzzle flip without having to put a great big muzzle brake or compensator on the end of the the gun So, you might be thinking this is a legally different micro Uzi. This is not that. This is the Uzi Pro. So this is actually a very close copy, game version of, the real Uzi Pro, which is from I think about 10 years ago. Uh, Uzi came up with a, a sort of polymer lower type setup that quite radically changed the look of the gun. So if you if you took that away, oh, and a side cocking handle so that they could put a Picatinny rail on the top cover, the original Uzi family did not have that capability. So they had to move the cocking handle from the top to the side, making the whole thing a little bit bulkier. So not so ideal for concealed carry, which is in theory the, the reason for the micro Uzi existing, things like personal uh, VIP protection. So you have a lot of firepower in, in a small package. That cocking handle sticking out the side isn't ideal. For the game, you really don't have to worry about that. Uh, I also would not trust, although this is on the real gun, I would not trust that kind of hand stop front grip. Uh, and the blast coming off that muzzle brake, although it's mostly going to the sides, I wouldn't want my hand directly under it either. Far too much scope there. For anything other than a full length foregrip, which is a bit pointless on such a short gun, I wouldn't want to be trying to hold it there really at all because your fingers can go in front of that muzzle far too easily. But as I say, something you can do on the real gun. Uh, another change from the pro, uh, with the pro rather, they adapted the mag the uh, grip. So you still have the grip safety that you have to grasp to fire the gun, but the magazine catch went from being a press latch and then rip out the magazine to uh, a thumb catch. So they were trying to modernize this this dated platform and keep it relevant. That's the version that the developers put in the game because it's something a bit different than the, the 80s action movie style micro Uzi. Thanks for watching that, guys. Those were the guns of Payday 3. Uh, which I will definitely be checking out due to my abiding love of the movie Heat. Uh, we really appreciate you watching, both uh, my colleagues at GameSpot and here at the Royal Armouries. As I, as I often say, please do come and visit our, our physical museums if you can. If, if not, check out our new website that has just been revamped, and you'll find links there to our various social media platforms and our YouTube channel where you can see more of our guns and me talking about them. Uh, but we'll see you again next week.